In this lesson, we will learn how to get user input with input box in Auto Hotkey. First, let's create a script. So right click on your desktop, new Auto Hotkey script. Let us right click this and edit script. We will choose a hotkey like we used to. That is what, what we want uh, to press for activating the script. This is control Q, that the usual one, but you feel free to use whatever hotkey you want. Then to get user input, we will use the input box like this, then a comma, and then we get some input from the user and we store that into a variable. So I call my variable name, but feel free to name your variable, whatever you want. Then let's use the value that we get from the user uh, to print out some value. So print it to a message box, message box comma, and we could print out your name is, and then we want the v value of this variable. So we use the percentage, name, and then percentage. Finally, let's have a return and we're done. So control S to save it, double click to run it. And now we'll press control Q and we can see here that we have uh, this input box and I will just press Anders and this will, when I click OK, my name will be stored in this name variable and the message box will come up with my name in. So we can have some properties to this input box. The first thing is a title. So uh, that was uh, press comma and then your title will go here. So I will just say input name dialog like this. I save it, so control S. Double click to update the script, remember that, and then click yes. Now I run it, and we can see that we have a title up here. I just press cancel, and we can see that this uh, is still, this message box is still running, even though we didn't put in a name, but we'll sort that later in this video. So now we got an input name dialog. We could also add a prompt, that is, um, a text that we will prompt the user with. So we'll have another comma and then we will say, please enter your name. Now I'll save it again, control S, double click it to update and then control Q. And we can see that we now we have a, a user prompt here, please enter your name. So we have a title and the prompt now, just click cancel and we'll move on. The next setting, the next property, I'll just uh, leave empty like this. Um, so we'll jump to the next property because I'll get back to that. Now we can specify the height and the width of this input box. First, let's uh, we could uh, do it very little. So that will be 20, 20 like this. So now I will save it again. I'll double click to run it and then I'll press control Q and we can see that it's almost impossible to but we can do this. So this is clearly too small. Let's uh, change it to something big. So I'll say 750 and then 378 like this. Now I'll save it again, update the script and then I press control Q. We can now see that we have a nice big input name dialog. Maybe too big, but that's great for the example. Now we can specify what position we want this uh, input dial name dialog to go in. And that is in the upper left corner of the um, screen, that is 0, 0.0. And uh, this one, for example, that might be 100.0 uh, again, because we moved down uh, out of the x axis and this is the y axis. So uh, this is 0, 0.0 and this is, uh, I don't know, 1200 point 1200. That's not the case, but you get the point. However, I only record a part of my screen. You can see that uh, we can actually move the dialog up here in which you can't see. But if I want to go up to the left corner, I just press in 0, comma 0. We will empty these, but you can experiment uh, with the position at your own. So I'll just make this empty and this empty. So two empty things, that's the position. Then we can have a local. So if I write local here, then um, this property means that uh, if we write local, then these two OK and cancel, that will be in the user language. Well, my computer is in English, so we won't see a change here. So I'll click Save, then I will 
double click to run it and then press Control Q. We can see this still okay and cancel. But if you have like German version, an Indian version of uh, Windows, then these buttons uh, names would change. The next property that is uh, timeout. So uh, when this input dialog comes up, we can define a timeout. I'll just define maybe seven seconds. So you put that in in seconds here and we can uh, control this, save it. Now I'll run the script again, press control Q and we'll just wait seven seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven. And we can see that we have a timeout and the timeout that just means that we jump to the next uh, script or the next part of the script here that is our message box. And then we, the name variable was of course empty because we didn't provide it any value. So um, we will now do some exception handling. And that is when an error is thrown. So um, we can, uh, so if everything is okay, that is, let me uh, press control Q again. That is if we, the user type in, type in something or not type in something, but at least click the okay, then everything is okay. And, uh, and the built-in variable error level will be zero. If the user click cancel, then the built-in error level variable will be one. And finally, the value of that variable error level will be two if it times out. Let me show you how we can do some really nice things with that. So um, we, we don't need to do anything, but we can go down here and then we can say, we wanna elaborate on the error level or we will look at the value of the error level. So I'll make a switch and that's just an extended if. So the switch error level, this was our built-in error, error variable and that could take the three values, zero, one, two. So this is a switch and the switch is all, always have these curly brackets here. So let me just by the end, by the start and the end like this. Then we can have some cases and the cases that is just the case zero. That is if this error level is zero. And remember, if this error level is zero, then everything was okay. So I can just have a message box with the message box. Your name is name. Then we can have a case if this variable is now one. So case one. And that is if the user click cancel. So message box. You clicked cancel like this. And finally, we can have a case two. That is a message box again. And we can say that uh, maybe just timeout like this. So now we have uh, an exception handling. So if it's zero, then everything will proceed as we want it to. And then we'll have two exceptions. One, if the user click cancel, and two, if the uh, user didn't type anything in within the seven seconds. So let me save this, run it. We'll click yes. And now press control Q. I can just try to put in a name, click Anders, then okay. And we'll see that your name is Anders. Let's try to click cancel. So if I do this, you can see you click cancel like this. And finally, press control Q, we'll wait seven seconds and we'll see that we get a message with the timeout. That's this one here after seven seconds, timeout. That, that was it. Now we have um, two properties left. The first one, that was uh, this one up here between uh, user prompt and then the um, width, and that is hide. And uh, this is a smart property. We can ask for a password. Well, it's rarely used, actually, but uh, we have the opportunity to mask the user input. So let me save this. Let me update it. Press Control Q. And now when I type here, we can see we have stars. So uh, this is good for password. We don't use it that much. Finally, we can have here in the end, we can have a default value. So I could have, uh, could just type in Anders. And now the default value will be Anders. So let me save it. Let me double click it and then I'll run it. And we can see here, oh, well, now we have the hide on. So that wasn't the, the smart thing. So let me delete this hide. I like making these live videos because then you can see how we can solve the errors on the fly. But I'll save it here, update it, and now we can run it again. 
we can see that the default value is Anna's and we can simply just click OK and the input will go in. In this lesson, you learned how to get user input, that is input box with auto hotkey.